cut speech. All right, me fat boy. Worst part of your job, get you cut. If you're a post school, you don't want to have a cut, run them. I used to have boot camp for two weeks. We run two miles a day. All of them know it. We, I tell them in advance. I have a pre meeting like a month or two months before. I said we're gonna run two two miles a day for two weeks. And our 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 workout our our routine. And this is a good thing to have is a routine. Our routine was they come to the court. They run two laps around the court. We form a circle. We go through all these stretches. I have the captain of the team run the stretches. It's the old one two three one one two three two. You hold a stretch one two three three. Go up to eight. They change the stretch. You do all their stretches there. This gives them time to socialize with each other. Gives them time to focus in on the, on what you're going to be doing. Gives them time to get everything out of the system. Make sure they're not screwing around with the stretches. Okay. After the stretching part of the practice, they go run two miles. Make it to somewhere and come back. It's boring around the track. They'll cheat on the track. Make them, and you can run with them or you can just supervise them. They run two miles, come back. When they come back, we do agilities. They line up on the side. We do agilities. We do crossovers. We do side shuffles. We backpedal, but when they backpedal, make sure you're leaning forward. I had kids fall twice and they hurt their wrists, but backpedaling is essential because a lot of girls don't backpedal well. And then we demonstrate the first drill and then we run to the first drill. That was my practice routine. So the stretching and gain there was 3 o'clock to about 3.15. The run was from 3.15 to 3.30. From uh, 3.30 to 3.45 was the agilities and the uh, also we tell them to bring a water jug and a towel so that you don't have to let them go somewhere for a water break. Okay. From 3.45 to 3.55 we explain the first drill. We demonstrate what we're working on. From 4 o'clock to 4.20 they do the first drill. You change, you let them have water break. 4.20 to 4.40 you change the drill, do the next drill. 4.40 to 5 uh, you start having match play. Always end practice with match play. Uh, 5 o'clock to 5.30, continue match play, you just rotate the match play. 5.30, break, talk to them, and summarize what's going on today, summarize what we're working on. Okay? That was my practice routine, that's what the kids always did. Actually, it was broken down to, from 3 to 5, and at 5 o'clock to 6, I would have practice afterwards with, with the good guys, we just do our own thing. But always have a start and a stop. The good thing about that 3 o'clock to 3.15 stretching, you let your kids do it, you don't have to deal with that. You know. All right, now, you've done the practices. I'm sorry, I'm kind of deviating, but now we're going to cut speech. Best way to start your cut speech, me fat boy. How do you think tryouts went? Get two responses. Response number one, tryouts been great, coach. I've been killing people. I should make the team. Me fat boy, you're 0-10. You lost every match. You know, I, I really want you to have me on the team. I, I think at this point in your career, your tense, that you're not quite where we want you to be. I would suggest that you take lessons and you go out and play tournaments and work on different parts of the game. Uh, me fat boy, I think you have good forehand, I don't think you use it enough, I think you have good serve, but you're inconsistent, I think your backhand's too weak, uh, you don't body very well, we're looking for doubles players on our team, you know, you say those kinds of things. That's option one, that's the hard one. Option two, oh coach, I don't know man, I've been doing very well. That's easy for you. Then you say, me fat boy, you know, I'm sorry, but you know, you've been 0-10 at this stage of your career and you go on and do the same speech you did earlier. Okay? Worst possible situation is start crying. They start crying, do the reconcile thing, and apologize. But you must, they know, they know how they're doing the trial. Some people don't know, but the ones that cry know that they're doing the trial. It's really painful. But you got limited courts and you just tell them flat out, you know, I really want to keep you in the team. I, and you really like them, you can keep them as a manager. You know, and see how well they like it. And, and as a manager, occasionally they jump into drills, you know, depending on their skill level. But, you know, if you really like a kid and you want them to be around tennis, you can keep them as a manager. However, they can't play. It's, they can't play, you can't keep them. That's why I like the running, the two mile thing, because they cut themselves. And the way I do that is, me fat boy, you missed practice today, where were you? They have to tell you where you are, but they can't miss that two weeks of running. So if they miss the tweaks of running, then they owe you double running the next day. And no one survives double running the next day. They got to run four miles. Yeah. But it shows you how determined they are to be on the team. So say me, fat boy, you got some kid that blows off the first day of your, your, tri your two-week tryout. And you say, okay, you know what? You owe me four miles. Sorry, I interrupted. So we have the player that doesn't come to your, your trial, your practice, the, the two-week thing. You make them do it. They have to do it because everyone has to do it. Okay, no, no problem. Say a kid 
it has to go like math club or you have debate club or some other like academic thing. You, you make it make it okay for them, but tell them you know, hey, you have other things. You you lose points in practice, so you're not gonna get to play. If you're missing a day before a match, you don't get to play. Ironclad rule: you're not in a match, you don't get to play. Special rule for championships. But we'll talk about that later. Okay, now so um, kid misses practice, right? Doesn't tell you where he is. You, you come up to him and say, you know what? You gotta tell me where you are, or you're gonna be on probation. Kid does it again. Home on probation. During probation, say it's 10 days, they can't miss out practice. If they miss a practice, they're off the team. And during probation, the double run. I've only had one player get through probation in six years of coaching, public school. When I have no uh, no cut policy. You know, I used to have like 40 kids come up for my team. And and um, we made a good, we, we did a lot of social events, so the team was a great thing, you know, but the rule was you gotta come to practice. You don't come to practice. You gotta tell me where you are. You don't tell me where. If you don't come to practice, you can't play, basically. But some people just, you know, like to be on a team environment. And my team would change year to year. I would lose like half my team. Like the first year I had 12 players, and the next year I had two, because 10 of them had to move, and they don't want to tell me they're moving, because they're afraid I'm gonna cut them, because I'm telling them they're moving, you know. So the next year I, I overstocked. I had like 24 players, and the, 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 the when half those kids move, I still had 12 players, you know. So it builds. It was necessary for me to do that. If it's not necessary, I would suggest cut your team down to a smaller, smaller amount. 